Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. I was just up here um, a week or two ago at uh, Metro Vancouver. So um, I'm also going to be doing my textile presentation after this, um, or not directly after this. But um, right now, I'm going to just do a general overview on our San Francisco's program. And while they're setting up, um, are you you're still working on it? OK. Um, I've been with the Department of the Environment since 2001. We're a city department, and we do um, a number of different things, clean air, uh, toxics reduction, I work on the zero waste team and there's about uh, nine of us, nine or ten of us on the team and I focus on residential. But this presentation today is just going to be kind of an overview. I know there's a lot of people from the Bay Area here already who have probably seen this a million times. So feel free to take a break. I won't be offended. All right. Um, where is the clicker? The clicker? Was it up here? Oh, I think it's here. Sorry, it was in the dark. I got it here. OK, so I'm going to just kind of outline some of the unique qualities that has allowed San Francisco to progress um, the zero waste policies. Um, and uh, one of the big things is, um, you know, we are a very dense city. We're densest to uh, our second in density to New York City. So um, that creates a lot of uh, issues because it's harder to get the discards out of the buildings. We have um, 850,000, Paul Conant mentioned that, inhabitants in San Francisco. That goes up to uh, 1.5 million during the day because of all the commuters from the East Bay coming into the city. We have a long history with resource recovery. Um, a lot of uh, the immigrants from Italy actually came to San Francisco and became waste pickers at a very early stage. And a lot of those immigrants now actually run our are still with the com company. Their ancestors are still with the company. So it's a, a, and a long history of resource recovery. Pay as you throw system has been in place from the very beginning. And uh, we have a unique system in that we have one uh, service provider. I know we're very different than LA or other communities, but we have, that makes it a very simple system. It's one hauler for all of our commercial, residential, city government sites, even our outdoor events are serviced by one hauler and it's Recology. It's a worker-owned um, company. Um, the city regulates that rate every six years. So as the, the company is petitioning for a rate increase, um, we have a rate hearing process that goes on for months. And through that rate hearing process, we, the city can negotiate new programs. So that it's, some people call it, this is not my words, but a regulated monopoly. But be, through that system, we've been able to really implement, implement really progressive zero waste programs. We've created incentives for our service provider. As Paul Conant mentioned, um, Recology doesn't own the landfill. They own the composting facility and the recycling facility. So they, they are they're incentivized not to landfill. But in addition to that, the more they divert from landfill, the, more, the higher access to profits they get in their company. Um, the, a lot of this stuff started um, in California in the 90s. There was a law passed um, say an, called AB 939 that um, required every county in California to divert 50%. So because of that, we, we knew we needed to go after food scraps. Most counties within California could just needed to go after the landscape debris and compost that. Um, we didn't have the yards because of the density. So we knew we needed to go after the food in order to reach that 50% diversion rate. Um, so we take all compostable, similar to a, a lot of communities in the room. So anything that was once alive, we accept compostable bags. We have a commingled uh, recycling program. And if everybody's using the programs as they should, we'd, we'd be at a 90% diversion rate. So uh, very, very few things are actually going into the landfill bin. Um, but we got to get people to use the programs, right? And that's, that's the key. We've had huge uh, political support um, historically. Uh, Mayor uh, Newsom was behind um, our mandatory composting ordinance. Randy Hayes was a president of our commission. He used to run Rainforest Action Network. So just a really progressive environmental pol politics from, from, for a long time. Um, we passed our zero waste goal in 2003. We're, it, within our zero waste goal, it specifically says we're against incineration um, and it has to be highest and best use. Incineration to San Francisco is resource destruction and it's not the highest and best use. We want to keep those resources in continual circulation as long as possible. 
We passed our mandatory composting and recycling ordinance, so all sectors are required to compost and recycle since 2009. It's taken us until now to get full compliance, so uh, we couldn't like airlift, airdrop all those programs all at one time. And we've, it's been a slow educational process, so it's, it's taken some time to get the programs available to get all of our 8,600 apartment buildings composting, but we're, we're finally there. There's probably about 50 left that have serious space issues we're still ironing out right now. Uh, we've banned a number of products, as uh, folks mentioned. Um, we banned the plastic bag. We banned uh, bottled water on uh, city property for public events and styrofoam. Um, and Jerry Brown just signed uh, the California uh, state ban on plastic bags, so we're super excited on that. Um, but we, even though we've reached this touted 80% diversion rate, we're still sending over 400,000 tons uh, per year to landfill. And I think we do really need to move away from these diversion rates. So someone talked about that. It really should be per capita dis disposal. Um, we've gotten a lot of criticism over the years about our diversion rate and are we comparing apples to oranges. And I think um, we, we definitely understand that. We really need to be looking at per capita disposal. How are we going to get to zero waste? We, we don't have very many years left. Uh, we have a comprehensive uh, program where we send folks out uh, to commercial businesses to set them up with composting and recycling, ongoing education in language, Spanish, Chinese outreach. We, have, uh, we use a lot of pictures. Um, I know I'm running out of time, so I want to speed up. Um, because of all the language needs, uh, we, we focus on pictures as much, much as possible. Uh, we do bus shelter ads. Um, and we have a comprehensive school education program. We have um, over 100 uh, public schools composting and recycling, and I have a whole team in my office. That's just all they do. They got Phoebe the Phoenix, that's the mascot, talking to kids every day in public schools, how to do it, why, why it's important. We just started, uh, probably about four years ago, a job training program in our office, so folks that have barriers to employment can come work at our office. It's called Environment Now, and all they do is hit the street. You know, feet on the street, talking to people door to door, small business, multifamily, and single family homes. We have a green apartments program. They're out um, talking to people door to door uh, three days a week just in the apartment buildings alone, telling them how to wrap their food scraps. I mean, that this type of uh, outreach I, I find to be the most effective. We can be bombarding people with billboards and flyers all day long, but people aren't, aren't getting the message because they have too much other messages hitting them at the same time. Face-to-face -face education is going to be the most effective in language with native speakers um, is the best way to go. So we hire native Chinese speakers, native Spanish speakers, speakers to go out to the communities to talk to people face to face. That's going to be way more effective than me using my Spanish talking to somebody. Um, like I said, uh, we're working in apartment buildings. We still have um, a few, a thousand uh, um, commercial businesses we're trying to get into compliance. Um, and we've uh, also put together financial incentives for the generators. So the more they recycle and compost, the lower their bill is going to be. And they actually have a diversion rate right on their bill. So if they're diverting 60%, like a lot of restaurants, or restaurants are probably doing like 80, they'll get like 80% discount on their overall bill. We're actually running into problems with this because uh, we've done this for so long now, where's the revenue going to come from, right? So now we've, we're, we're looking, we're working with Ruth on a zero waste rate process. Like what is that going to look like as we start having to charge more for recycling and composting? Um, we're moving into that. That's the next frontier. We're, um, we're implementing textile recycling bins in apartment buildings because of all the textile waste. Um, and I just wanted to share this picture. Burger King is building, creating their own signs on composting. So if Burger King can compost, anybody can compost. That's my theory. Um, what's that? Yeah, eat, eat your burger first, though, before you throw it in the compost bin. Enforcement, I'll be honest, enforcement has been kind of our weak point. We've really focused on education. We've gotten a lot of criticism from other counties like Alameda that we're not kind of enforcing enough. We, we do have the ability to force on, enforce on our mandatory composting ordinance uh, through our rates. So we can charge 50% more on their trash if they have recycling or compostables in their trash bin. So we're doing that with large generators. I can go into detail later if anybody wants to hear that. But we are flipping carts and leaving bins. So we're moving from the carrot, where we used to give financial incentives, to the stick, 
and we just have to move that way because we've given the carrot out for too many years now. Um, we are now collecting over 650 tons of organics per day. We've seen a huge jump. We went from 400 tons per day to 650 tons just with our mandatory composting ordinance. The, and I, I am a believer that you have to mandate these, these programs um, to get real participation rates up. Um, I don't need to go, you guys know about closing the loop. The importance, California, we're in one of the, the worst droughts in California's history. Uh, composting is uh, vital and we need to start composting. So don't forget organics. Um, get the plastics out. That's our composting facility. I'm just, there's the, the grapes we're growing from our compost. Um, the, real quick, the cover crops in the front, are use, are, they're using our compost on those cover crops. They're fixing nitrogen on the back. The cover crops don't have our compost. And producer responsibility. Okay, so my, my lessons are establish convenient programs, extensive outreach and education, provide generator service provider incentives, mandate composting and recycling, implement producer and consumer responsibility, and don't forget organics because it's local and you don't have to send it to China. <laughs>